Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience and waiting. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us for this virtual press conference. My name is Suzanne Varislam. I am the president of the East West Center and very excited to say that we have just concluded our 12th Pacific Island Conference of Leaders here at the East West Center hosted by Hawaii uh, with our chair of the Pacific Islands Conference of Leaders, President David Panuelo from the Federated States of Micronesia, as well as Hawaii's own Governor David Y. Ige as the host and also a member of the Pacific Island Conference of Leaders. It has been a wonderful set of three days in which we've had welcome 16 leaders from Pacific Island nations uh, with a theme of Pu'uhonua, the Pacific Way. This is our first in-person convening um, at, since 2016. The Pacific Islands Conference of Leaders, along with the Pacific Islands Development Program here at the East-West Center, uh, was, was really established in 1980 by our Hawaii Zone Governor Ariyoshi and, of course, uh, Sir Ratu, um, I mean, Ratu Sir Kamisese Mara from the first Fijian Prime Minister um, to really bring together Pacific leaders to discuss and dialogue. So before we um, begin, I just want to share that we're going to start with some opening remarks from our host here in Hawaii, our Governor David Ige, as then followed by President Panuelo. And then I will open it up to you for uh, questions and, and, and please tell us who you are, where you're from, and also uh, who you'd like to direct the question to. So with that, I will turn it over to Governor Ige. Well, thank you uh, so much, Susie. Um, it uh, truly was an honor for Hawaii to host the 12th um, um, Pacific Island Conference of Leaders. Uh, to be able to welcome um, heads of state of uh, several nations, uh, as well as um, participate actively uh, in this conference. Uh, it was a terrific reminder of what uh, draws us all together as Pacific Island nations. Um, the big blue Pacific Ocean connects us. Uh, our traditions and history and culture binds us together, uh, and it was um, uh, appropriate that the conference um, theme was Pu'u Honua, or safe uh, gathering of um, all of the participants here to discuss um, issues that are important to Pacific Island nations. Um, uh, it was. Uh, great dialogue and discussion. Uh, it was uh, appropriate that we meet, uh, met uh, in person for the first time in uh, several years. Uh, and it was a reminder about um, the notion that um, Zoom meetings and virtual meetings are terrific, but there's nothing that can beat uh, in-person um, dialogue and discussions being able to share meals uh, at the table with Pacific Island leaders, informally discuss the many common issues that faces all of our island nations and communities, uh, and really make progress in strengthening um, what um, brings us together as a Pacific Island community. So um, Hawaii was definitely honored to be able to host this conference. Thank you, Governor. President Panuelo. Well, it has been an honor chairing the 12 Pacific Island Conference of Leaders. And before I go into uh, the outcomes of our uh, conference, I, of course, want to begin by thanking our gracious host, uh, Governor Ike, uh, for Hawaii's hospitality and uh, art uh, warming welcome. I also thank uh, Susie Ferris Lum, president of the East West Center and the PITP uh, for being the host institution. Ladies and gentlemen of the regional and international media, as chair of the 12th Pacific Island Conference of Leaders, I wish to at the outset, uh, thank you for your continued commitment to building an informed public. Your role is very important. Your work is essential towards keeping our democracies free and leaders like ourselves accountable. 
In this respect, I will speak to you today about the outcomes of the 12 Pacific Island Conference of Leaders. Some of the key themes discussed at the conference are the following. Number one, industry diversification. The Pacific Island Conference of Leaders discussed means of cooperating together to diversify our reliance on tourism and fisheries, such as through using breadfruit and other agricultural items to make value-added products. Number two, peace and security in our region. Pacific Island Conference of Leaders discussed mutual desire for peace in the Pacific and to move toward forward with the Pacific way of conflict resolution in keeping and maintaining peace in our region. Pacific Island Conference of Leaders discussed common agreement to protect the rules-based international order. Number three, 2050 strategy. Pacific Island Conference of Leaders socialized the 2050 strategy for the Blue Pacific with all pickle members. And so now the state of Hawaii, American Samoa, Guam, and the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Highlands are aware of the part of discussions about this regional strategy for the next 30 years. Number four, US engagement in the Pacific. Pacific Island Conference of Leaders discussed increased engagement with the United States, increased engagement with the US is broadly very much welcome, but there is a distinct and profound desire for the US to treat all Pacific Island countries with respect, and that is inclusivity. And to reference the Blue Pacific strategy at all times when possible. Number five, helps treated water. The Pacific Island Conference of Leaders discussed helps treated water, that this is a transboundary and this is an intergenerational and continues to present a concern to the Pacific Island countries as a whole. And lastly, number six, Pacific Women Leaders Coalition. Leaders endorsed this coalition, which aligns with regional calls 2050 Blue Pacific Strategy and Global Goals 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. So those are the themes and topics that were discussed by Pacific Island leaders during this uh, 12 uh, pickle here in Hawaii. And I thank you all. Thank you, Chair and Mr. President. I uh, appreciate those comments. At this time, what we want to do is if you um, have a question, please tell us your name and your um, where you're from and also where you'd like to direct your question. Um, and if you could, again, uh, raise your hand and then I'll just call upon you. So I see Thomas. So please, Thomas. Hafiday, my name is Tomas Manglonia with uh, KUAM News, uh, currently based on the island of Saipan in the Northern Marianas. My question is for Governor Ige and uh, President Panuelo. Sir, nice to see you again. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask about um, military uh, training and testing. Uh, does the Pacific Islands uh, Leaders Conference, was there a united front in terms of the future of the US military when it comes to expansion of training and testing? And uh, in particular, Governor, uh, your reflection and um, thoughts moving forward with regards to that given the uh, uh, issue with the Red Hill. Yeah, uh, certainly. Thank you uh, very much uh, for that question. Um, the Pickle Conference itself did not uh, talk uh, in detail about um, increased training or increased um, size of the defense force of the United States in the region. 
there was definitely consensus that um, security and peace in the region was something that all Pacific Island um, nations and communities uh, desire and that um, I think what the leaders agreed to is that there really needs to be res respectful dialogue and discussion uh, with all of the Pacific Island nations um, so that we can ensure uh, continued um, uh, peace in, in the area and uh, rules-based uh, law and order. So um, fr from the state of Hawaii's perspective, uh, we continue to see the importance of um, the, the armed services in the state of Hawaii and um, their um, participation, as you know, um, headquarters for uh, all of the component commands and the Indo-Pacific uh, Command is here uh, in the state of Hawaii. Um, we continue to work with them. We do appreciate the recognition um, that the Red Hill facility uh, needs to be operated safely and uh, will be defueled and decommissioned as quickly as uh, it is safe. And certainly the state of Hawaii looks to uh, work with the Navy to ensure that that can happen in a safe way and as quickly as possible. Thank you, Governor and um, President. Would you like to? Sure. Yes, I I just want to you know just say out here loud and clear that climate change is our greatest single existential threat, and that's the biggest items that was discussed by Pacific Island leaders. In terms of overall uh, security, we of course discuss in preserving the rules-based international order. I think that's very important to keeping the Pacific very safe. And I think uh, uh, it is something that every country, big or small, would need to uphold and respect so that our world can uh, uh, live in you know, peace and, uh, and uh, tranquility as the Pacific demonstrates the, the most uh, uh, peaceful uh, region. Thank you. And uh, just my last question, uh, again, for President Penuelo, uh, ahead of your visit to the White House and uh, your audience with uh, President Biden, what are some of your priorities uh, going in there? And can you just give us any more details to who will be in the room and the details of uh, that trip to the White House? Thank you. Uh, I know uh, details are coming to us as we are heading to uh, New York for the United Nations General Assembly and then to Washington, D.C. for the uh, uh, first ever U.S. Pacific uh, Leaders Conference with uh, President Biden. And you know, cooperation with the Pacific is uh, uh, on the agenda would be the uh, topic. Uh, as uh, Pacific Island Forum leaders met at the last Pacific Islands Forum in Suva, we had a direct address from uh, Vice President Kamala Harris uh, to us, which outlined uh, Pacific engagement, including fisheries, which is uh, very important. And so we can expect that going to uh, Washington, D.C. We'll discuss all of those interests, including development, climate change. And uh, so uh, we are preparing the Pacific Group to talk on those topics. Currently, uh, Fiji is the chair of our Pacific Islands uh, 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 Forum uh, right now. And I think uh, what we're asking U.S. is to be very inclusive as we go in as a Pacific region uh, to advance uh, regionalism, because the Pacific, of course, uh, uh, being one as family is very important uh, uh, to advance uh, uh, issues that are most important to our communities. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we'll go on to the, um, in this order, so Nick, Stephen, and then Anita. So Nick, over to you. Thank you to the chair and thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak. Um, my name is Nick McClellan. I'm a correspondent for Islands Business, which is a monthly news magazine published in Fiji. Um, President Panuelo, I wanted to tease out this notion of the rules-based order because many Pacific Island governments want to change the rules <laughs> on oceans negotiation. There's negotiations around the high seas. Um, and BBNJ beyond national jurisdiction 
at the WTO, people are campaigning around fisheries, obviously on climate and, and so on. Um, this constant reaffirmation of the, the rules-based order, it seems to me, in fact, that many Pacific governments want to change the rules. And I wonder if you could comment on that. And that's related to the question of the Biden summit. Um, not all members of the Pacific Islands Forum have been invited to the summit, according to news reporting. For example, Niue, who was at your meeting, uh, French Polynesia, New Caledonia, um, have not been invited because they're not independent states. Do you see this as a tension that um, existing regional organizations are being overridden by other processes um, by major powers, be it the United States, China, or others? Well, thank you, Nick, uh, for those questions. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I don't think that Pacific Island countries are trying to change the rules-based international order. At the PPNJ, uh, uh, you know, negotiations at the United Nations, uh, they're ongoing. It broke down. We send our delegation over there. It's very, uh, very uh, uh, detailed what we are trying to uh, put there. What the Pacific Island countries are doing is to make sure that our existing baselines are recognized despite, you know, changes in climate change because we anticipate inundation of our nations. And that's very important. We want to make sure it is secured. In terms of uh, uh, meeting with Python and the approach, uh, we know that the Pacific Islands Forum uh, uh, is our premier uh, regional organization, and it will remain that way. I think the contention is uh, by some that when uh, uh, U.S. invites our region, uh, the, we want to be uh, uh, inclusive of all the members of the Pacific Islands Forum as a family. Of course, there's international rules in terms of protocol because some of the members of the uh, Pacific Islands Forum are territories, as you can see, of uh, France. And so I believe the meeting here uh, at the 12 Pacific Island Conference of Leaders of Puhu Honua is a very uh, topic that it has a safe uh, area, refuge uh, for discussions in an open and frank manner. And that issue was discussed, as a matter of fact, Samoa did uh, flag that with the United States and uh, Niue. Uh, they directly uh, uh, you know, uh, flagged those concerns. And then we went into bilaterals with the U.S. delegation headed by uh, Deputy Secretary of State, uh, Wendy Sherman. And I think those were clarified. And I think U.S. as the host of that first ever uh, U.S.-Pacific uh, Islands uh, Summit, uh, they'd be considering some of these so that when we meet in Washington, D.C., that it's amicable, you know, and that is it, it is inclusive. Uh, but the uh, U.S. is the host. They are a sovereign country. If they uh, invite us, I'm sure uh, it will be based on the rules as, a, you know, as a, a nation inviting the Pacific. So those sensitivities, I believe, they were cleared out and the Deputy Secretary of State acknowledged all of that and the dialogue continues. So we believe uh, U.S. intention is a genuine one to engage all of us, but some of those protocols would have to be worked out. And so uh, we, we believe in uh, being genuine in the engagement, and I, I believe it'll be a successful uh, uh, meeting that we will hold in Washington, D.C. with uh, President Biden. Thank you, President. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Uh, and next, uh, Stephen. Oh, hello. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to, to speak. My name is Stephen Jedgetts. I'm a reporter uh, with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation in Canberra. Uh, President Panuelo, um, it's good to see you again, sir. If I could please uh, direct my question to you. Um, you said last month uh, ahead of the, the planned summit at the White House uh, that the US and Pacific Island states we're working on a common vision statement. Um, are you able to say, sir, whether that was discussed at this meeting today, either or over the last few days with uh, Deputy Secretary Sherman? Uh, and can you give us an idea of exactly what this statement looks like? What are the key priorities uh, for the US and Pacific Island states? And what's the purpose precisely, please, of this common uh, statement that's uh, due to be issued uh, out of the, the, the meeting at the White House? Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Stephen. It's good to see you again, and thank you for seeing me in uh, Suva during the forum leaders uh, meeting. I think that's a, an important question. 
normally protocol, we don't discuss the details of something that is in a draft form and is only between uh, leaders and uh, President Python. But I will tell you that climate change will be a, a strong focus. Uh, the 2050 uh, strategy for the Blue Pacific uh, continent was adopted by leaders in uh, Fiji. That would be a, a document that I believe the United States will have to pay close attention to as it encompasses all of our priorities, teams, and everything that you can see. So the uh, regional architecture in terms of working so that all of our crop agencies are able to uh, strengthen, build, align the, their strategies to uh, support that document. I think United States as one of our, uh, you know, uh, uh, biggest uh, partners in terms of uh, cooperation that will be looked at and many other issues. And uh, so uh, I've, I've seen that, I've reviewed it, and it is a very forward-looking uh, document that respects the, uh, the institutions in the Pacific to strengthen democracy, rule of law, and uh, everything that you can see in terms of cooperation. But I think you can expect the uh, United States has announced to Pacific leaders that they are appointing the first special envoy to the Pacific Islands Forum, and that is to strengthen uh, cooperation with the Pacific leaders. Uh, uh, it's announced also that uh, we can expect that uh, appointment of that uh, uh, special envoy to the Pacific Island uh, uh, Forum uh, anytime soon. And so we look forward to a very uh, fruitful and productive uh, uh, meeting with uh, President Biden in Washington, D.C. Uh, Stephen, if I could just add, um, as part of the discussion that we had here at the Pickle Conference, I think what um, the Pickle leaders uh, had expressed, and um, that was, I think, heard by uh, the Deputy Secretary, was that the 2050 a blue continent um, strategy is a consensus document of the Pacific Island communities. Um, Guam and Hawaii had an opportunity to, um, to review and agree with that basic premise. And I think what was the sentiment shared by Pacific Island leaders is that they are hopeful that they would be able to work uh, with the Biden administration on our strategy yes. and our plan rather sure. than have um, the White House and the U.S. develop a plan for the region. I think that that's the sentiment that was shared. I, mm -hmm. I do believe that the deputy secretary had acknowledged. Uh, and certainly, you know, I think the outcome, um, I think everyone is looking forward to the meeting and the outcome. Can I be a little bit greedy and jump in very briefly there, then just with a follow up? Obviously, there's also been some concern expressed about the partners of the Blue Pacific Initiative with the US and other nations. Not that the intention isn't good and that the, um, that the ideas might not be worthy, but that there's a risk that it may sideline uh, PIF and PIF's priorities, as well as the 2050 strategy that you've both referenced repeatedly. Is that an, a concern that was expressed to the US at this meeting? Thank you. I mean, I do think that the 2050 strategy, strategy is a broad framework for collaboration and consensus. Um, yeah, I, I didn't see anything that um, was not aligned with um, many of President Biden's priorities. Uh, and I do think that if you acknowledge, as um, President Panuelo had mentioned, that the climate crisis is the number one issue for Pacific Island communities. As, as island communities, we see the impacts of climate change every day, and it's getting more intense uh, and more frequent um, uh, every, every day. So um, clearly, there is a greater sense of urgency in the Pacific uh, around the climate crisis than um, um, most other issues. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, turn it over next to Anita. Hello, thank you. Apologies, I'm uh, zooming in from my car actually outside the East-West Center because I was just at the um, closing and then they said to join virtually. So anyways, um, apologies for my car background. 
Um, but it's great to um, hear from you today. It's been a lovely conference. I was so happy to be able to attend in person. And this question is for uh, President Panuelo. Um, uh, I was. Could you tell us what, what um, news agency first? Oh, oh I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is Anita Hofschneider from Honolulu Civil Beat. Thank you. Ah, Thank you. Hello. And so I, um, this question is for President Panuelo. I, um, my, you had mentioned, you know, that the um, Pacific welcomes U.S. engagement in the Pacific and increased um, engagement in the Pacific. But I was wondering if you could expound a little bit on how the U.S. could improve its engagement in the Pacific. Well, Anita, thank you. We should have invited you into the room. You're just uh, nearby. <laughs> and thank you for your organization, Civil Beat. You cover a lot of, uh, you know, the Pacific and, uh, uh, you know, the Pacific uh, heartbeat a lot of times. And we appreciate you uh, helping the community to understand the issues. Well, with, with the United States, uh, you know, United States, if you look at uh, here, the presence of the indo -Pecom, it covers the uh, theater that uh, you know probably is responsible uh, for more than uh, fifty percent of the population because it extends into the Indo-Pacific region, which is very large. And I think U.S. Uh, presence and U.S. Uh, uh, you know uh, posture is very important to maintaining peace in the Pacific. And you know there's a competition now. the The area of the Pacific has been. Uh, uh, seeing increased uh, geopolitics because of the influences over the bigger countries coming here. But we, the Pacific, we advocate that, that we are friends to all and uh, enemies to none. And I've said many times in different, uh, you know, platforms that we welcome uh, all the countries to cooperate with the Pacific Island, uh, you know, the nations here. And we want them to compete in a healthy manner that preserves the uh, harmony and peace and, you know, of the Pacific, because that's what we are in the Pacific. And I, I just want to encourage uh, all of the countries that are partnering with the uh, nations in the Pacific, that their role is very important. Uh, the three uh, fully associated states, we have a very close alliance with the United States under the Compact of Free Association, as you know. And uh, the pillars of cooperation are, of course, uh, uh, political uh, defense, uh, you know, and uh, economic cooperation. So defense being one, uh, we have a very close tie with the U.S. as a nation that has a, a constitution. We uh, have delegated some of the defense responsibilities to the United States. And so sometimes we say we feel part of the homeland, uh, especially Micronesia, you know, uh, Palau and, and the Marshall Islands. We're currently... Uh, we have a negotiating team coming up here next week. They will engage the United States on our third round of uh, negotiations for the extension of that relationship. Uh, some of the provisions will expire in 2023. And then that's what we're looking at to uh, negotiate so that before expiry of some of those provisions of our compact for free association that it is concluded soon uh, so that there's no disruption to this uh, very good cooperation with the, with the United States. And Anita, as you know, um, the, the renegotiations of the compact is very, very important to uh, states uh, like Hawaii and territories like Guam, where we have um, the most um, migration from uh, the compact states. And uh, certainly we know that um, additional resources would help us to help uh, those who choose to migrate um, from the, the federated states. And, um, and clearly during the course of the conference in the many um, informal dialogue, you know, one, um, one thing that um, the Pacific Island nations are uh, looking toward the U United States is really um, assistance with a recognition of their internationally recognized boundaries and, um, you know, um, trying to maintain the rule of law and um, um, having discussions to help um, protect uh, their um, regions uh, and uh, economic zones are is certainly something that um, all, all of everyone is hoping to see. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, 
the president. Okay, um, we are, I think we've got all the questions here. Um, we have time for one more question and then we're going to just any wrap up for any closing comments. Um, but I don't see any other hands up. Oh, Timothy, Tim, <laughs> Timothy. Hi, uh, this is uh, Timothy Hurley, <clears throat> a reporter with the Honolulu Star Advertiser newspaper. Um, this um, question is for President Panuelo. Um, what, uh, what do you hope to accomplish in terms of climate change in your meeting with um, President Biden? Oh, thank you, Timothy. Uh, I was uh, waiting for additional, uh, you know, uh, comments with that, but I think that's a, a very big one, <laughs> since uh, climate change is really the uh, greatest, most existential threat to our island nations, and it's a, a collective uh, priority of our Pacific nations. Uh, you know, we appreciate that the United States, uh, under the Biden administration, has come back to really strongly uh, endorse the uh, Paris. Uh, you know, agreement uh, coming back on board uh, from previous uh, administration. And so we want the United States to champion climate change. It's, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the biggest superpower. And of course, uh, uh, China, we say that as well, the most populous nation. We want China to also champion uh, climate change. When we engage these countries, we're, we're really, of course, we understand the role of uh, superpowers, but when they engage the Pacific Island nations, we say we're not interested in the, uh, the you know, superpower competition because it's a given. That will happen anyhow. But we want uh, these countries, including the European Union, uh, all the nations around the globe, uh, to make sure we have all the, the commitments that we have uh, given uh, under the uh, COP26 is one of those uh, uh, times that we met and made further commitments that every country with their nationally determined uh, contributions that they uphold uh, the uh, collective uh, effort to keep uh, uh, you know, the temperature at 1.5 uh, degrees because science is so strong and behind uh, you know, all of the uh, trajectory that if we don't, uh, then uh, our, our global community will face a very, very severe uh, situation in terms of, uh, you know, uh, climate change and it, its impact on, on the, you know, communities. Uh, when I spoke at the United Nations a couple of years ago, I said that it might be a bigger uh, challenge than the Second uh, World War uh, because of the extinction of uh, life species that supports our our uh, global community. We may take that for granted, but the, it is a very serious concern because most of our nations depends on the ocean, depends on our land for sustenance. And you know, in the in the bigger countries, you may be going to the supermarkets to buy your food, but uh, guess where your food is coming from? It's coming from the farms, uh, from the ocean. And if we don't work together to combat the challenges of climate change, uh, uh, we will all be impacted in the uh, most negative ways that we can imagine. And so it's not uh, something that one country alone can achieve and uh, champion, but all of the nations around the world. And we small island countries are the ones that are paying the price. You know, we're, we're the frontliners uh, in terms of feeling the effects of climate change, inundation of our uh, you know, coral atolls with communities. If we don't, they'll be migrating from the small islands into the uh, uh, you know volcanic islands, and we don't want that disruption uh, in terms of uh, uh, climate, uh, environmental uh, refugees running away from their islands, and it's going to be a bigger issue for for the world. And so you can see the kind of uh, uh, pressure and weight that is upon all of us uh, nations to tackle climate change. Yeah, and Tim, just, um, uh, you know, we did have participation from uh, Japan and South Korea and Australia and New Zealand as well. And they had reiterated their commitments of increased um, financial support for the Pacific region. And 
you know, what I heard from um, many of um, Hawaii's Pacific Island uh, neighbors uh, was um, they really wanted to see uh, a streamlining of uh, the financial commitments right. and uh, easier access to the financial resources. Yes. Uh, and certainly they recognize that they need to make investments in uh, transitioning their energy systems uh, and improving resilience. Yes. Uh, as they've seen increased typhoon activity, increased uh, king tides, uh, coral bleaching as um, the impacts of uh, the climate crisis. So certainly I think um, that exchange was uh, during this pickle conference was, uh, was I think um, increasing the understanding of the needs of um, the Pacific um, and um, assuring and sharing uh, with those uh, who are making investments that um, there needs to be more effort on streamlining and simplifying processes uh, so that um, these island nations can take action to improve resilience and uh, energy transformation. I, I, I wanna thank the governor for raising that because the experience of small island nations accessing the Green Climate Fund has been very difficult. I, I said at one point, it's like pulling teeth. I mean, they're announcing billions and billions of dollars by the industrialized nations, but accessing these funds have been very difficult and our small capacities as a small island nations, uh, you know, it takes us three, four years be before we can access, you know, uh, awards from the Green Climate Fund. And then when we go into the implementation stage, the bureaucracy of it is also very difficult. So you can imagine while in the backdrop, uh, climate change is already happening and impacting our, our nations. And so I thank the governor for uh, speaking to the, uh, you know, stepping up uh, financing for climate change and uh, streamlining the uh, procedures for accessing those funds. Thank, thank you, you, President. Thank you, Governor. Uh, thank you, Timothy. Thank you all for um, um, being online. You can find out more information on our website, the Pacific Islands Development Program site, as well as our social media sites. Um, and if you have any questions or additional inquiries, you can contact our, our um, communications team that you can find on our website. But uh, before we close, I just want to double check any closing remarks, President or Governor. I'll... Yeah, I, I thank you, uh, Susie. What I'd like to say is that we've given you some of the highlights, but uh, you know, as in every conference, we're, we're having a communicate that will be issued the uh, Pacific Islands Development Program as a secretariat to the BICL, Pacific Island Council Number of Leaders, will be uh, uh, accounting for the uh, discussions in a communicate that will be issued in the next several days. So as uh, media entities that have engaged us, uh, we ask that you look out for the release of the communique, which will outline some of the uh, key topics that were discussed by Pacific Island uh, nations and territories. So thank you again, Governor. Oh, and thank uh, you. Thank you, uh, uh, thank, you. thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you all for, for signing on and I appreciate it. Also, since you are all journalists, look out for our journalism programs that are available, 50 years of journalism programs supporting you, free and open press. So thanks for what you do. Um, to preserve free and open and actual facts out there. So aloha to all of Aloha. you. Thank aloha. You. Thank you. Bye.